Hello. Hello. Yeah. So we can Good start morning. now. Good morning to everybody. I think only few have joined now. So we can uh, start and wait uh, so that others can also join. Yeah. So only few have come. Hopefully, others will also come soon. And uh, uh, may I request you to, uh, uh, whenever you talk, you uh, unmute yourself. Okay. And I'm. I hope you have been uh, reading from the study material. Have you started reading? Anybody? Can you tell me? Yeah. Sir, I, I would request all the learners to mark uh, their attendance in the chat box with their with their name. Please write your attendance. Yeah, you may please uh, switch uh, un, uh, mute yourself. When you are not talking, then mute yourself. Your mic, you can close it. Abu Bakar. Yeah, good. So uh, I hope uh, you have got the, uh, you have all got the study material, no doubt, but uh, you have been opening the unit and uh, about it and talk, um, reading it also. So please give your attendance, write your name in the chat box. Okay. Yeah, so that we know who all are coming. So we are on the MPA 2 co course, which is on understanding man made disasters. So we have had uh, two sessions earlier on MPA 2. Today is the third session. We have finished unit 1 to 8. Earlier today we will do unit 9 to 12. We'll cover that. So uh, basically uh, today is unit 9 is air pollution. Uh, unit 10 is water pollution, unit 11 is deforestation, and unit 12 is industrial pollution. So basically we are talking about pollution. So you think pollution is a problem? Anybody? Yes or no? You can write yes, no on the chat box. Yeah. Anybody who knows? Yeah. Abu Bakar, you have open. Uh, yeah, you want to say something? Please come up. What do you want to say? Uh, unmute yourself before saying Abu Bakar. Uh, good afternoon, all. Um, good afternoon. Yeah, uh, yeah the, uh, this is just a start from Sarah Leon. Yeah, um, surely um, air pollution, especially pollution itself, being in general, uh, it's really hazardous to, uh, to humanity, not just humanity, but all materials in between, either plants or even structures. Because basically, although there might be um, of varying um, compositions, as, as you speak, but like uh, their impact, can be really deleterious depending on the sus susceptibility or resistance 
of uh, the targeted uh, body. It might be living or non-living. Because not just uh, pollution, not just affects um, living, also affects structures and other materials that uh, that offer uh, 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 that offer utilization. Okay. Okay, good. Yeah. Uh, please uh, mute yourself, your mic, when you are not talking, uh, Joseph. Yeah, good. Thank you. Okay, good. Yeah, pollution is there. It's a big problem. I think it's a worldwide problem. And, uh, you know, also now it's related to climate change. It's becoming, and the, all the countries are getting worried about it. So we must learn about these and see how, what we can do to reduce this and not let it become a disaster. Okay, very nice. So... <clears throat> Let us uh, understand about pollution today so that uh, pollution could be from you know, um, various factors, but uh, we have classified them. So let us, most common one is the air pollution. And uh, so you can, in the book, when you open it and see on unit nine, you will find it covers the classification of pollutant source of air pollution. There are two sources, natural source, and anthropogenic source. So anthropogenic is, what is anthropogenic source? You would have all heard of it. Yeah, anybody? Yeah. Yeah, uh, these are from um, human activities or the yes. influence of humans. Yeah, Very sure. good, human activity related. So yeah. maybe man-made, simply yeah. speaking. So, mm -hmm. and uh, then we can say the effects of air pollution, health effects, ecological effect, air quality management. So this is what it covers. And um, some of you would be knowing quite well about uh, this uh, topic. And uh, some would know a little less, but everybody I'm sure would have heard of it on the, this thing. So, so I will cover generally about uh, these top things on uh, air pollution but uh, i will also request you to uh, read the book again and understand it our textbook that is the complete syllabus and the assignments also okay george you can't use the mic okay I think you should uh, all try to get a system where we can, because our class, this is only online. So to be more interactive and having our between each other, maybe better to be able to see if you can fix this problem, at least for the next time. Oh, okay. Now, we can say, consider what is air pollution. You know, it could be due to many reasons, no doubt. So, and uh, yeah. So, uh, it occurs when Air contains gases, dust, fumes, or odor in harmful amounts. It's already there, but it should not be in harmful amounts. So the level of these gases and other things polluting the air, it increases. Also, when the 
concentrated gases exceed safe limits. So that also you can say is a, we can have us. Now to understand where does it happen? It happens in the air, this air pollution, air means the atmosphere. So now uh, what is atmosphere? Atmosphere, as you already know, it is the uh, gaseous envelope uh, surrounding our earth. And it consists of a mixture of gases vital for the propagation of life process. This air is very important to us. Then uh, atmospheric pollution is the presence of substances in air in concentration sufficient to cause harmful effects on the health of animals and man, vegetable, vegetation and property or to interfere with the enjoyment of life and property. Means your normal life it interfere, then it is also harmful. So pollution means to make air impure or unwholesome. It's not uh, conducive. So what does it have? The presence of dust, smoke, fumes, mist, odor or gases. In, these gases could include oxides of carbon, sulfur and nitrogen. In, and these are in quantities or for the duration for the time that unnecessarily alters the average or the acceptable purity conditions of this atmosphere. So this is what we understand by, you know, pollution, linking it to, it is in the atmospheric, so it is an atmospheric pollution, air pollution. And it is due to gases, but also dust, smoke, fumes, mist, odor. Now, <coughs> you all know that the maximum percentage of gases in the um, atmosphere is oxygen, which is about 78%. This can increase slightly or decrease also. They can vary, but this is the maximum. Then uh, second most uh, 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 vol by volume is uh, nitrogen, about 20%. And then we have all other gases, which are in a fraction of a percentage, very little. But uh, they could be harmful also if they go beyond certain percentage. They have so a lot of other effects also. They could be, uh, all these we have mentioned earlier, oxides of carbon, sulfur and nitrogen are the main thing. Rest are these inert gases or some very other thing, very, very small. But there is also water vapor. Vapors are there also. Okay. So that is also part of the uh, atmosphere. Now, this air composition, it keeps changing with uh, due to uh, change of seasons. Then altitude, as you keep going higher in the uh, atmosphere from Earth, the distance keeps increasing. So the composition also change. And uh, also due to solar activity. Sun, in fact, is a very important source of energy also. And now, this oxygen in the atmosphere, oxygen as a property of it being very highly reactive because it oxidizes. So, so it has a lot of influence on various geochemical cycles. You know, 
uh, you would have studied in school nitrogen cycle oxygen cycle carbon cycle they're like that there are many cycles and most of the atmospheric oxygen uh, is due to photosynthesis and ultraviolet radioactivity so it has and expired air another thing that the concentration is reduced to uh, much less and concentration of carbon dioxide increases much higher so this is expired air where the concentration of oxygen becomes much less now <laughs> At least you have uh, understood what is uh, pollution. So, but what is the source of air pollution? Uh, we are saying very simply. So, pollution of outdoor air is from various sources, diverse sources. Cause of pollution, you can trace it to many human activities. It could be one activity or many other. It could be multiple activities also. So, now, example of human activities which pollutes are combustion of, you know, fossil fuels, which are coal and oil. So, pollution of by sulfur dioxide, carbon dioxide, not nitrogen oxides are there. So, another thing is the treatment of waste, all these garbage waste that is there various types industrial or to, uh, or from very other sources household so these some of they release ammonia and uh, hydrogen sulfide in the atmosphere so they also create a lot of pollution and uh, also both these uh, <coughs> would be very obnoxious smell also. So the nature of pollution in an area is uh, related to the types of activities that the people there, the community which are living there, uh, uh, it depends on them. Now, another thing is natural source. What is the natural source of pollution by nature? How does nature pollute the air? air? Anybody? You, you all know that man pollutes the air. Yeah, but how does nature? If you can't talk, you can uh, just uh, in the chat box write the answer. Good day, sir. Yeah. Bye. My name is. Uh, yeah, my name is Rabiu. It is yeah, Rabiu. Is yeah, we just from Nigeria, yes. Huh. Okay. So I think there are uh, this kind of during the uh, Hamatan season, like uh, having uh, such kind of uh, ha uh, hazard. No, what I mean, um, the changes. Yeah, hazard is there. Before. This pollution is a hazard. Very nice. Yeah. Yes. Mm. Okay. So, George, you want to, I am from Malawi, my question to you sir, is that as we have seen development has a direct impact on air pollution as development like machine, factory, vehicle, etc. What can be done to rescue this situation because development is good and important that we all need to progress in a nation. Okay, yeah, good. So, let us finish this. Um, uh, unit and then see. Okay, George, we will do that also. Uh, in the end, you ask me this question that will be because we'll let everybody first understand the pollution. Yeah, so you are right. Uh, that will also what you're saying. So, but we are creating this uh, pollution, but also naturally it occurs due to volcanoes and fires forest fires 
you know, the volcanoes also have a lot of fire in them and that reduces gases from the, um, from the, um, with the molten lava and other things, gases also come, these are polluting. And then there are uh, forest fires. Uh, yeah, uh, Joseph, you want to say something? Yeah, um, even towards um, um, the biochemical reaction that takes place in the microbial level, especially in streams and also um, by animals, um, owing to the generation of uh, methane gas, which is one of uh, uh, the pollutants for environmental, uh, yeah. which is of uh, methane yeah, gas, sure. Yeah, that's also there. So that is actually animals and man both uh, generate uh, a lot of you. Are, you are right, methane is one of them. It's a lot of animals generate. Now, uh, in your, uh, it's uh, important to understand what is the atmosphere or the layers of atmosphere. You know, then only we can, because it is under, uh, actually we presume that you would have studied this in your, uh, school also, especially in your general studies or geography or there. So uh, there are various zones. So hemisphere, homosphere is the chemically uniform up to 100 to 120 kilometers from the earth. This homosphere is the complete thing. And heterosphere is above homosphere structurally uneven so it could change the compositions basically of the now altitude increases there's a change in temperature pattern of the atmosphere so on the basis of this change atmosphere has been divided into four uh, zones or strata you know layers so troposphere is the closest to the earth stratosphere mesosphere, thermosphere, and exosphere. So this is just for your knowledge. It's not part of the course syllabus, but to understand what the atmosphere is that I thought you will like to know. So that's also very uh, part of all. So, and uh, what is this? Is troposphere is the first one which we found closest to the earth in it's uh, touching the earth actually uh, it is above the surface of the earth so here the temperature uh, gradually declines that means it is getting colder and colder as the temperature gets lower and lower so it is declining and uh, now, all these have an effect on pollution, you know, on the gas, other things like that. Oh. So, thickness of this is about 10 to 20 kilometers, and the temperature keeps falling uh, from, a, say, on the average around Earth is, say, 15 degrees, so it goes to about 50 degrees, minus 50 degrees. And the rate of drop is about six uh, centigrade uh, <coughs> six degrees centigrade per 100 meter as you keep going up and then it, it is not even actually so but it is just a just to get an idea so it, 99 percent mass of gases is found in this atmosphere so the uh, atmosphere as uh, the atmosphere, the gases or the air is compressed at this level. Because if you go higher, it is very, very rare, the air. Yeah. What do you want to ask? Yeah, please. Is there any question? Anybody wanted to ask? Okay. Then above this. Yeah. Uh, up to a height of 40 50 kilometers from the earth is stratosphere this is a very thin layer above the atmosphere and the temperature here is uniform and uh, it is same temperature in this 
in troposphere we found, saw that the temperature is falling here it is same zone composed of ozone layer this ozone layer is again very important in pollution understanding of pollution or and it protects the earth against the ill effects of ultraviolet radiation so ozone shield increases the temperature from 56 degree which was minus 56 degree below to it is now it was so cold at the top of the troposphere was minus 56 degrees so here it is now uh, goes to minus 2 degrees so temperature has increased actually although from our level it is still very cold so mesosphere height from the earth is 70 to 80 kilo marked reduction in temperature at, and this is at an altitude of 70 kilo kilometer and temperature falls to minus 92 degrees centigrade so stratosphere the temperature was minus 2 so here it goes to minus 92 and thermosphere is height from the earth is above 80 kilometer anything above mesosphere so temperature is very high very very high temperature over there and the thickness of the zone is about very 500 kilometer and contains uh, oxy, O2, oxygen, nascent oxygen and nitrogen oxide. These are now the meteorological conditions met or the weather conditions affect us. So, what how does they influence atmospheric pollution? How does it, it is influenced by meteorological conditions? present in the area. Now, meteorological factors which influence says magnitude of vertical and horizontal transfer of air pollution. So, according, depending on the meteorology, um, there is a, a transfer of air pollution or, or see, uh, if there is a high breeze, naturally the pollution will blow away, simply speaking. Yeah, Othman Uber and Rebus Idris. Yeah, you have raised your hand. You want to say anything? So, Othman, yeah, so uh, yeah, okay. Uh, you have said uh, about the transposphere. So I want to, uh, more, I need more clarification on that uniform temperature. As I see, your slide uh, okay, okay, I'll tell you. Transposphere has, uh, has a uniform temperature. So, what does that mean? That uniform temperature, I need more explanation on it, sir. Okay, you. Oh, I'll tell you. Very good. See, yeah. See, we are stratosphere. Yeah, yeah, stratosphere. Stratosphere is above troposphere. Okay, the lowest yes. layer is uh, troposphere. Actually, which really matters to us because this is the air we are breathing, we are living in. And uh -huh. troposphere yeah. is the one where we are living and breathing and using. Beyond that, we can't even exist. It's not, but it has other effects. So stratosphere and in troposphere, as you already know, if you are in a, say, plain area and you climb a high mountain, if you go up, the uh, weather, it becomes the atmosphere over there is cooler as compared to low, lower place, isn't it? So, the, that means the temperature is dropping. So, it drops in the troposphere. In stratosphere, there is a ozone layer in stratosphere. That is the second layer. It is a ozone layer. So, ozone is a, has a particular effect. And now, what, uh, what was the temperature on top of troposphere? It was minus 56 degree. So, that means stratosphere where it starts, the temperature is minus 56 degree. And where it finishes, the temperature is minus 2 degree. That means from yes. minus 56 degree, it has become warmer to minus 2 degrees. Isn't it? Yes, sir. So now, third 
place is metosphere, mesosphere, which is above stratosphere. So here the temperature. Now the temperature is all, uh, at stratosphere. It on the top of stratosphere is minus two degrees. So that means the end of stratosphere, the temperature is minus two degrees. So. <coughs> Now, in the third layer, mesosphere, there the temperature now when you keep going up, it falls from minus 2 degrees to minus 92 degrees. It means it becomes much, much cooler, colder, very cold in fact, minus 92 degrees centigrade if you imagine. So, that's what it is meaning that it, the temperature change is not same in all the layers. So, it has a lot of uh, impact on various other things. Uh, we'll cover to some of them. Now, see what is the impact see, of meteorology or the weather conditions. So, now, major things are temperature, wind, humidity and atmospheric pressure. That is what we measure in meteorology or the conditions of the now, uh, now temperature, it has a direct uh, impact on the movement of air particles. Naturally, when there is uh, more heat, the gas will rise up, air will go up, isn't it? And it influences the diffusion of pollutants, how they spread pollutants. So, temperature is important for uh, pollutants movement and diffusion. Now, wind, its directions and the speed, it determines the movement of the air pollution. So, if it, the direction is say, westerly, so it will move towards west. If the <coughs> Um, speed is more the pollution in a local area in a city will get blown away or if it then humidity influences the precipitation of pollutants on the earth humidity uh, it uh, because the more the humidity it will there will be rain and there will be precipitation so it, it can it will wash down the pollution so many toxic pollutants combine with water vapor particles particles to particles to the surface of the earth so uh, when the rain comes humidity is high there is rain so it will wash down the pollutants and atmospheric pressure influences the movement of pollutants in an air important consideration for many polluted null parameters See, atmospheric pressure also influences the movement. If the pressure is more, actually the air moves from high pressure area to low pressure area. So if there's a low pressure area, the air moves from there. Now, so all those who are joining, please write your name and mark your attendance on the chat box. I hope you are doing it. Now, let us see some criteria for air pollution. That is the laws that regulate them for human health. So, these are based on environmental criteria, science-based uh, guidelines for setting some permission levels. So, what are the important things? First is ozone. So, at ground level or bad ozone is not emitted directly into the air, but is created by chemical reactions between oxides of nitrogen and volatile organic compounds in the presence of sunlight. So, ozone is... Uh, Uh, so, 
how does ozone how is ozone formed yeah tombo silver you want to say something tombe silver yeah you raised your hand anything okay maybe so that is one thing that the ozone is at the surface ground level is not a good gas and it is it uh, actually it reacts very fast and with various uh, ox nitrogen oxides or their volatile organic compounds so in the presence of sunlight so breathing as ozone is also harmful to us and to the uh, to the ecosystem then second thing is particle pollution particle matters you know this is a sort of a dust actually but very very microscopic solid or liquid droplets that are so small that they can be inhaled so when you breathe them in so they cause health problems now this these particles these are very fine particles they are the main cause of reduced visibility that is haze in most of the places yes. and third thing is carbon monoxide now breathing air with high carbon monoxide it reduces the oxygen that can be transported in the human or the animals uh, blood stream humans or uh, to uh, see uh, uh, blood carries the oxygen to the various parts of the body to the organs where it is required so if the carbon monoxide is there so this can uh, this affects the uh, carrying capacity of the blood to carry the oxygen and uh, a problem of carbon monoxide is mostly indoors uh, not outdoor because outdoor it gets spread so it becomes diluted and so indoor uh, generally how uh, uh, I think you would be knowing this effect of carbon monoxide. How is carbon monoxide generated? Anybody knows? Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, actually, what I know about the carbon dioxide uh, is that uh, carbon that, that, that is the, the exhaust from the generator or any machine that uh, usually release uh, what am I going to call it? Like smoke like, like that. Okay. Uh, Mohammed uh, Rabua, you have written, uh, you, I think you are also, you are correct. See, when there is a combustion taking place, there's a fire. I think I covered it earlier in that uh, fire accidents before that, that what is combustion or does it take place? So probably you didn't attend that. So these are things are, yeah, yeah, Joseph Stanley and Dumba Sam. Okay, who wants to say something? Yeah, you yeah, um, yeah. 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 So, yeah. 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 Um, towards um, carbon dioxide, basically, um, it's um, it's actually generated uh, through combustion, complete, possibly complete combustion of um, organic materials or carbon-related materials. And uh, yeah, it's uh, a contributing factor. It's contributing factor to the green, greenhouse effect, and uh, which is um, directly linked with uh, this of a global warming crisis as we speak now. Okay. Uh, see, it is uh, carbon monoxide. Firstly, is uh, harmful. It is created by incomplete combustion. Otherwise, full combustion, combustion. will create. Right, yeah. Uh, carbon dioxide so and you yeah. uh, organic matter yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I'm, i was talking about the carbon um dioxide not carbon monoxide yeah because so, uh, the carbon um dioxide it's uh, from complete combustion that was what i was saying sir yeah. 
Yes, yes, I, that's right. So, and uh, greenhouse gases are all these. We'll cover that also. Yeah, below Laval. You want to, you raise your hand. Below, below, below yeah. Laval. Yeah, is that correct? Yeah, what you want to say? Yeah, yeah I was just trying to add to the effect. Yeah. In addition to the global warming, it also has the individual effect because it interferes with the with the oxygenation of the lungs. So oh, yeah. Once you inhale it, and then yeah, it interferes, and then it has that effect of reducing like the oxygen intake in yeah. your respiratory yes. system. Yeah. Okay, very good. Yeah, it reduces the oxygen intake. Okay. So fourth polluted we can consider is lead. Now, once it is taken in the body, it distributes in the through the bloodstream and accumulated in the bones. Lead is also lead poisoning. Then takes place and exposure to lead can affect the nervous system, all our uh, parts and other things. It means immune system. So that's why. <clears throat> All this is also a pollutant. And next is sulfur dioxide. So, so this also affects the respiratory system and makes breathing difficult. Then uh, nitrous dioxide. See, we were talking of all these uh, uh, earlier, carbon, sulfur, and nitrogen, their oxides. So, a uh, high concentration of uh, nitrogen oxide, ni dioxide, or where there are various nitrogenous oxides, different uh, compounds, can irritate airways in the human respiratory system, and exposure can uh, cause respiratory diseases and asthma, especially. Uh, and longer exposure may develop all these respiratory problems and infections. So, this is the sixth pollutant. So, uh, we have understood, we have covered these pollutants which are in the, uh, which causes air pollution. Now, there is something called petrochemical smog pollution. So nitrogen oxides and hydrocarbons present in the atmosphere for because of the use of petrol in the vehicles, uh, they react with sunlight. So toxic compounds are produced through photochemical reaction between sunlight and the pollutants. So this is petrochemical smog pollution also is one of the things. Now, let us see the types of air pollution. Uh, we can say outdoor air pollution is smog, particulates, acid rain, and greenhouse gases. You had mentioned uh, sometimes back. And then there is indoor pollution. So these are the types of could be one way of describing the types of air pollution. Smog is a pollution, air pollution, due to air pollution, particulate matter, it is the acid rain and greenhouse gases. So what are the, let's say the causes of uh, this pollution, air pollution. So it could be source, could be you know, various sources like uh, you can have natural source, smoke that comes from wildfires or volcanoes or methane or dust. The particulate we were mentioning, dust that is dust. And human source could be from power plants, automobiles, fumes, burning good stores, fireplaces, furnaces, so many these type of things would cause human source. So it is basically natural source and 
uh, man-made or human or you now actually if you see pollutants so which we had mentioned earlier also carbon dioxide carbon monoxide sulfur dioxide nitrogen dioxide these are more common ones and uh, <clears throat> we all know about these now how are these uh, pollutants you know reacting or how do they become pollution with this so uh, first thing is if you see from the left side in this uh, diagram this mechanism of air pollution you see the sun is there it is acting and on the ground we are there so there are uh, main emission source of air pollution which is there now is the vehicles or industries or similar things where mainly it is the nitrogen uh, oxides nitrous oxides they cause air pollution so if you see this how this is trying to depict all these things that uh, it uh, this air pollution this nitrogen the sun acts with it photo chemical reaction is there and this uh, when the cloud is there if you see on the right side the cloud is there so this uh, rain over there it dissolves this and forms uh, nitric acid various and it brings down acid rain so this is a polluting um, rain which is there so generally they say that when the shower first shower comes uh, in a season so that would contain acid rain but as the rains continue so this is washed away so air becomes more cleaner and this uh, photochemical oxidant of nitrogen this is what was in the center is being depicted with the ozone uh, ozone actually so it come reacts with it and there is a effect on that on the plants on the life and it also all these coming down <coughs> Uh, as acid rain this is one of the aspects uh, mechanism of air pollution so now primary mechanism for this waste we're talking how this formed so is formation of voc that is volatile organic compounds and biological generation of VOC is there. Then formation of liquid aerosol droplets. These aerosol droplets are very fine particles again. And then man-made generation of particulate aerosol also. We are using some gases, some systems, all which also work. like the refrigerants are there and biological formation of particulate aerosols by some bacterial process or thing and particulate aerosol formation takes place so this is the primary mechanism of then we have the secondary mechanism of this condensation absorption nucleation Condensation is that the gas or vapors, it goes up, then it, because we know that the atmosphere, as you keep going up in the stratosphere, uh, it is troposphere, it is getting cooler and cooler, so it condenses, or absorption by moisture or rain, 
and nucleation. The, the nuclear of it is, becomes the on which uh, uh, the other particles uh, or the water vapors, these become the nuclear on which nu <coughs> they condense and they form um, this um, fog or mist or other pollutant also. Now, we had seen the classification of air pollutants earlier. So again, wide variety of, firstly, there are many pollutants who, which are present in the atmosphere. So we have to, uh, when we talk of pollution, we see their impact on the health and ecology, and then evolve appropriate strategies to control them. Now, this is how we have to have these strategies to control them. And the pollutants are can be classified in numbers of ways. So it could be based on the source of emission. It could be classified on the base of their chemical, physical, chemical characteristics and their effects on the life processes of so our So just briefly have a look. So if you are classifying them on the source of this thing, it will be natural source and man-induced sources. So natural geochemical contamination, photochemical reaction, change in climate conditions, volcanic eruptions, gaseous discharges from marshes and swamps, forest fires, dust, fog, and radiation fallouts and microbial agents these are the natural man induced incineration that is burning of wood coal petroleum products automobile industry vehicles which oxides of sulfur and nitrogen carbon monoxide smoke and fly ash from automobile and industry oil refineries also then agriculture textile paper and pharmaceutical industry dust particles by milling, crushing, grinding, and pesticides and uh, drug residue and organic inorganic papers. So these are some of the uh, sources of uh, as per natural or man-made induced source. So if we uh, classify it on physiochemical, there are two main group: physical, chemical. One is the particulate pollutants, that is the particles which are there, particulate, and the gaseous pollutants. Gaseous, you all know. So, particle pollutants mean it could be dust particles, very fine dust is there, mist, fly ash, uh, droplets, fog, smoke fume soot so things like that are the particulate and gaseous ones which are the gases oxides of sulfur nitrogen carbon monoxide hydrogen sulfide vapors of gasoline and uh, many other trich uh, chloroethylene so these are various other gasoline based of so these gaseous pollutants especially are or these are Toxic to, you know, living creature, man, animal. And there could be organic decomposition of waste also. Waste is there, so that also. Uh, so, methanogenesis methane. Methanogenesis methane and carbon dioxide. So, uh, from the... In India, we have a, we are using it uh, also this methane in a domestic fuel. So there is a system of uh, collecting this, especially in the rural areas, uh, by uh, where rural areas they have a lot of animal dung, the excreta of the animal. So they collect it. It's called uh, in in India, it is uh, 
uh, in, in the language, local language, it is called gober gas. From that, biogas, absolutely right, uh, Mohammed Rapu. So, uh, is it done in your also area? So, it's made in the households. They have a small pit on in which they dump all this, and with the water they mix and slurry, all the dung is put, and there. Uh, on top of it, it is covered with a dough, you know, it's on top. So the gas collects it and through a pipe, it is taken and there is a floating, you know, container with uh, this pipe fitted there. So on a floating on a water. So as the gas fills into it, the... Uh, cylinder that container or dome it rises in the water this when the gas comes from below and that is connected to the stove kitchen stove to burn it so otherwise the animal dung also produces uh, methane gas so which is a combustible and used as a uh, cooking fuel so uh, what I was asking, is it done in your country also anywhere? Have you seen in the rural areas? Because all over the places you will be having animals. No. You are, can you understand? Do you, in your rural areas, especially where they keep animals, collect this? Because otherwise, a lot of methane. And the residue which is left later on, that becomes organic fertilizer. Okay. So that's quite popular here in India. So how can air po uh, pollution have, what is the impact of air pollution? So one is health. So naturally breathing it and pollutants like tiny air barrier and download uh, ozone can trigger respiratory problems. So it can have uh, pollution is there more in the air. You have a, a burning of eyes, nose burns, so breathing, throat, irritation. Well, then second in effect is impact your environment. So these pollutants and chemicals, they form acid rain. And second thing is the ground level ozone These that can uh, damage the plants and the animals and uh, also the water bodies so where they can harm the fish and other uh, water and uh, life which is there in that so it affects the nation's economy naturally then each day air pollution will cause a lot of illness breathing with the <clears throat> loss of uh, man days and Children won't be going to school. And air pollution can reduce agriculture crops also. Also, forest yields could be to a lot of uh, very high levels. The losses could be there. Now, how does this uh, ozone and other, this, uh, other things uh, impact also? One of the things which take place is thermal inversion. Uh, thermal inversion, if you see, uh, occurs when a layer of warm air settles over a layer of cooler air that lies near the ground. The warm air holds down the cool air and prevents pollutants from rising and scattering. So thermal inversion, if you see this diagram on the right side, it is basically, <coughs> there is warm layer on top. Naturally, in any atmosphere, any place, the warmer air will rise up, isn't it? Very simple. So, what happens? There's a blanket of warm air on top, and so in between is a uh, uh, this cool cooler air which is stagnant. There is no breeze. Also, it causes it. So, and the pollutants are trapped near the floor on the ground. Uh, you can sometimes, this is also seen as a haze 
pollution haze is there in the cities, especially urban centers. You can see more because there's more pollution. So uh, haze also causes this thermal inversion causes haze also, and the pollution increases that time. The weather conditions also have to be there that uh, the air is stagnant, and but if there is and uh, this happens in valleys also. But if there is a strong breeze, it will blow it away. So that will be so weather conditions make a uh, also important for how the pollution impacts. So now <clears throat> effect is human and environmental. Human is respiration, other diseases, irritation, eyes burning, nose, throat, and other problems. Environmental is acid rain, eutrophication, haze, wildlife, ozone depletion, crop and forest damage, global climate change. So these are now we are moving towards these understanding this. Now, so the let's see in detail the effects of pollutants. So, direct on the health of animals and man, and uh, planetary biodiversity, the ecology, biodiversity, it affects all that. Then, toxic gases and substances present in the atmosphere, uh, you know. Toxic gases and other substances, they retard the growth. That is one thing. Then uh, promote aging, bleaching of leaves and other things like, and there is, I mean, there are many effects like that it can take place. So do, uh, the damage, how much damage or the degree of damage would depend on the dosage of the pollutant that means how concentrated is the pollution and also the duration of exposure, how long it is staying there or how long you are exposed to it. So there is all, then another effect is the loss of uh, the plant materials and, uh, you know, then damage to physical structures, monuments, buildings. So a lot of buildings are getting damaged especially uh, heritage sites and all that's a very big then non irritant pollutants like carbon monoxide may not always be associated with overt clinical manifestation carbon monoxide is a uh, odorless gas you know you can't make out whether it's there or not so that's why it's more so then there is zinc and lead pollution of the air so which is again uh, it can lead to a lot of fatalities in the animals also arsenic can be there smog pollution for respiratory problems lead pollution so it bones teeth all these problems could come fluorosis that fluorosis is uh, uh, the fluorides which are come uh, increase in that fluoride increase again is a very this thing it goes down into the soil and the water table to so that then metallic pollutants that is also uh, has a lot of uh, it weakens the animals and their growth is stunted um, so humans it affects uh, uh, the atmospheric pollution due to the metallic and gaseous substance, you know. Uh, you have the various diseases of lungs and throat, bronchitis, pulmonary asthma, inflammation of upper respiratory tract. Then all these causes, nitrogen oxide, sulfur oxide, ozone, and uh, carbon monoxide and particle matters. So these are 
effects has been seen in the then within the animal houses where the animals are kept and all so a lot of pollution is also seen so the environment uh, there is deteriorates so it affects the animals there and their productivity and uh, you know if more animals are kept in narrow in uh, very dense uh, this thing where ventilation is not good so that will also affect and all these pollution in the uh, how animals are being impacted is also there microbial pollution yeah somebody had mentioned earlier so so um, variety of microbes are carried in the they are in the atmosphere in the air where we are there due to various reasons so meteorological conditions affect them it is also affected the temperature humidity solar radiation so amount of particulate and gaseous pollutants contribute a lot to the variation the load is so all these and they carry these uh, can go a long distance also can be carried in the atmosphere in the wind and it uh, also affects the animals a lot who can be suffering various diseases so man, it, now if you see in man human beings if it they let they sneeze so they so much of uh, droplets they release huge amount of it so these microbes released by animal human source survive in environment from various uh, length of time it could be for longer periods also so but some may not survive longer than a few minutes whereas others can be for many years they can be there so this uh, bacteria basically can survive in soil for about one month baculus an exposure to sunlight caused destruction of many environmental microorganisms in soil microbacteria can survive up to 6 months also now uh these uh, you know uh, measuring the air contamination the air pollution so the microbial load of moving air is determined to assess the level of contamination within a building or given area that way and techniques used are sedimentation they to collect the samples and conduct qual qualitative and quantitative test analysis so these are little scientific although not part of our slavers but just to understand that these can are be measured also so there is various methods of air sampling them uh, again just to get some additional knowledge this is there for you otherwise yeah so somebody had asked how to manage them so how to control air pollution earlier you had asked so this we have come as it will come in there later so minimize the production and release of pollutants near the animal of human dwelling minimize their production release control of dust particles by improving sanitary conditions within the house this dust also contain and frequent washing of floor and equipment to control the dust within the buildings that is cleanliness vacuum cleaners then proper ventilation so a prompt clearance of the foul gases and all can be there so ventilation would help and use of laminar air flow system for you know cabins and you know closed compartment like train cabins and other things so it could be there yeah tombe silver you want to ask something yes uh, thank you very much for giving me this uh, chance i just wanted to ask two questions uh, to to know more about uh, these pollutants or let me say uh, pollution uh, 
let me just start with the control of uh, air pollution, uh, as you mentioned. Uh, one of the way of how to control is that, uh, like for instance, in animal uh, animal buildings, you have to make sure that. Uh, uh, let me say, for for poultry houses, uh, the drops of chickens need to be, you know, uh, to be removed daily in order not to cause uh, ammonia gas. And uh, globally, I've seen there are some uh, rules also when it comes to combustion. Uh, for instance, uh, the major cause of uh, uh, combustion, the carbon monoxide, the carbon dioxide, are sometimes generated by industries and uh, and uh, and vehicles. Let me say automobile uh, uh, devices. And uh, to this, once if there is efficiency, if they are maintained well, I think uh, in one way or the other also uh, it reduce uh, the, the cost of uh, pollution to to this uh, air. Uh, my question to you is that. Uh, uh, to what extent do we know that uh, the atmospheric layers are affected? How do we know that uh, these layers that we have discussed are affected? And then uh, I do see recently there is a global campaign uh, for renewable uh, energy to combat uh, changes uh, as a result of climatic changes and other things. And most of the climatic changes are as a result of the pollutants. And uh, I also wanted to know how how can we uh, what, what could be the best measures that can be put uh, globally in order to combat these changes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Good. I think. Um, thank you very much. You have. Um, very it's very nice that you are thinking on these measures and rightly so as you have also brought it out um, you have heard very rightly worldwide globally a lot of effort is being taken but you know maybe some other time i can cover on it you know there is a lot of thing going on there's a ip triple c ccc international protocol on climate change and uh, un led then there is a uh, Kyoto Protocol, which laid down, then there was this, uh, you know, uh, series of every year there is a COP meeting, COP uh, takes place, conference of parties, COP 27 was in Indonesia, uh, last year, last, last year was uh, COP 26 in, uh, in UK, um, uh, Glasgow it was there. So all these places and, you know, so as part of climate change, a lot of effort is going on globally. But today, let us, uh, there is, I think, uh, one unit on climate change also. I think in one of the courses of uh, this course, PGDDM. So there you will come to know more about it. See, today I want to cover these um, air uh, poly the four units on air pollution. So just to understand what is air pollution, then how the other things happen. So these are just the basic things you are covering. So controlling this, naturally you have to have these uh, laws, the, the COP and all these have been, their targets have been laid. And then how it is, um, you had asked earlier also linked to development process because you require industrialization and other things also and this, so but there has to be better practices to be followed a lot of money has to be committed by the developed countries you know on in these um, un uh, based uh, united nations based uh, these on um, development and uh, climate change lot of uh, action is being taken but i think we should cover it a little separately but here uh, naturally this control of air pollution these points that have been given uh, uh, these have to be converted into laws into a, by every country so that is one thing uh, 
awareness you are aware of it others are aware of it so that is also one of the ways so there are so many other things also being taken place so i think that would be uh, here we are understanding the basics on air pollution this impact is on climate no doubt it major impact uh, and then we will as we go ahead when we cover that it would be better to control this because today we won't have so much time so now impact is to repeat it actually we have covered earlier climate health economy environment ecosystem forestry agriculture so now what you were asking how does impact so the mitigation what you should be doing so mitigation of air pollution is what we were talking of it will affect so if this is given all these things have to be done sustainable development is required the development has to be sustainable so there are those uh, uh, sdgs laid down sustainable development goals of the un then international conventions and treaties are there there is like i mentioned about cop kyoto protocol was there and before that before the glasgow i am 25th meeting before, was uh, in paris paris agreement and then a lot of interna international powers they have their own views so paris agreement i think the american president george trump um uh this donald trump at that time the Amer he withdrew america from that and then up to from climate change in now the president again this then the next president they have come back so there is a lot of political things which keeps going on so if you study current affairs other things will come to know national international funds eco conversion new technologies recycling so the, all these things were brought out in that lower combustion to bring it down lower trans boundary emissions lower the emissions and sustainable development all these are part of the mitigation strategies so quickly seeing how we can reduce air pollution conserve reduce reuse recycle this is the mantra or the thing so conserve energy drive wise all these thing you can do so this is our uh, on this <clears throat> um, air pollution so before we go over to the next unit so uh, anything you want to ask on this thing then we can go to water pollution then otherwise yeah anybody no yeah yes hello yeah please uh, thank you for giving me this jadi uh, i can ask about uh, if the national agreement is uh, enough to, to reduce the emission of of, mon, uh, of carbon carbon dioxide and carbon monoxide is it enough no nothing is enough <laughs> i don't think so it is enough i don't know what the world powers are doing so whether it is enough or not but uh, 
that's why a lot of effort has been done and what how 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 can we apply how can we apply the result of glasgow uh, conference is is uh, is any i i will tell you what the one to, to up- uh, let us wait actually uh-huh. uh, it will be more out of our um, context of what we are doing today what we in this course it will it is going much beyond that because uh, but it is very important and interesting so maybe some other time i will take 5 minutes and sometimes give you a complete or when the unit on climate change and other things come then there is another unit later on you will be doing on disaster and development so there they will be explaining the linkage between these see now we are just doing the very basic ones you have studied uh, mpa1 was natural disasters to understand what are there mpa2 is to understand man made disasters then we will be going on preparedness then um, mitigation response all these the other units would be there medicine disaster and medical and aspects so and then in these you will be covering also these things so let's wait little bit i want to first cover little bit because otherwise now we got very little time left so i will but uh, this is a very nice and i am finding that you are interested in this so uh, directly related to air pollution let's uh, for today we will be restricting to the units okay because you want to do this course well you want to give the assignments prepare for that so this is what will be important climate rate change as such does not form part of this impact is there climate change one of the impacts health of the uh, means these are all interrelated okay so should we move on to water pollution okay and water is a very important resource and uh, so our concern of its pollution is uh, quite a bit so we are covering these then water characteristics physical and chemical then uh, factors all altering water quality water quality water quality criteria then quality standards for municipal and domestic supplies water quality stuff so these are some of the aspects with our which are given in your book so that you must cover so i will cover a few points which are um more interesting so what is water pollution anybody who will, who would like to you can read this you can see the uh on your screen so anybody who's not spoken i will request somebody who has not spoken and who can whose mic is working can you read yeah uh what up yes uh adamu usman galadima okay yes sir yeah, uh, water pollution simply means when the water is being contaminated by any agent which lead to the change of either the color the taste or the odor of the water in the quantity that it is enough to cause disease condition or cause any problem to either human or animals yeah okay so very simple contamination of water bodies anything right from lakes to oceans to ground water also under under the ground water and mostly or mostly by human activities this is pollution so it could be any change also change in the physical chemical and biological properties of water that is detrimental that is not good 
uh, for the living things in the water is water pollution then it occurs when pollutants are discharged directly or indirectly into water bodies without enough treatment to get rid of harmful compounds these are like industrial waste or sewage municipal from the town cities then pollutants get into water mainly by human cause or factors and water pollution is the second most imperative environmental concern along with air pollution so air pollution was the first concern water pollution is the again but it's still a very serious concern so what we can see is uh, when you classify when we when you are studying something so you group it classify it into certain thing so there are two sources of pollution one is point source one is non point source point source means one particular point like a uh, industry one particular industry is contaminating the pollu it is discharging its effluents directly into a river so that is a one point non point source is general in that area or something which is happening uh, that would be a non point source so let's say now what are the point source you can see that those sources which discharge water pollutant directly into the water are point source so it could be a oil well situated near a water body or a factory or a power plant underground coal mine etc these are point source means you can pinpoint them that this particular uh, uh, source is polluting it so that is a point source and then is the non point source now there you can't specify the location for discharging in the water the pollutants so this could be like agricultural fields or big lawns of the villages or the, of the of the towns gardens construction sites there are plenty in the towns roads and streets these are non uh, point sources so actually what happened the runoff from these places that is the agriculture fields or gardens across all these places are some non point sources there is the pollution which goes on there now let us see the types of water pollution so one is nutrients pollution that means some waste water fertilizers and sewage waste contains high level of nutrients you know so they end up in water bodies now the nutrients they encourage algae and weeds that grow in these water bodies so they make the water undrinkable and even they clog these natural filters or other thing they get clogged also by these weeds algae and other thing so too much of algae will also use up oxygen in the water and other water organisms in the water which will die out because of oxygen starvation so water pollution ultimately the uh, water uh, life that dies away the living creatures fish and other thing they die in polluted waters so you can see this you can know see how much pollution is there this is algae now covering up complete this thing then there is surface water pollution now surface water includes natural water found on the earth surface rivers lakes lakes and oceans hazardous substance come into contact with the surface water dissolving or mixing and uh, this becomes surface pollution which is with the surface water bodies so you can see this the, in the towns many places you can see such sewers are there which are again polluting Third, third thing is oxygen depleting 
वॉटर बॉडीज है माइक्रो ऑर्गेनिज्म इंक्लूडिंग एरोबिक एंड नॉन एंड एन एरोबिक ऑर्गेनिज्म नाउ वेन टू मच ऑफ बायोडिग्रेडेबल मैटर एंड अप इन वॉटर इट एनकरेज मोर माइक्रो ऑर्गेनिज्म ग्रोथ and they use up more oxygen in the water so that's what happens these are biodegradable matters which causes this and there is more micro organism growth so the oxygen is depleted because there are more growth in the water uh, micro organism which is requiring oxygen so and so if oxygen is depleted then aerobic oxygen uh, organisms die and anaerobic uh, Uh, organism grow more to produce harmful toxins such as ammonia and sulfides so aerobic organisms are the living creatures and they are more like fish and other things they will die and these algae and other things would be increasing which will produce lot of other this so you can see this oxygen depletion this fish has died in this water body and comes up so they can't survive there then fourth thing is ground water pollution so what is ground water pollution if you see humans apply pesticides and chemicals you know basically it's the chemical which is in the form pesticides chemicals and they are washed with the run off from the agriculture fields and they or with the rain they will go down into the soil sub soil this goes to underground water causing pollution underground this means when you extract this water by digging wells or boring the earth to this can be there actually uh, fluoride and uh, ammonia fluorides ammonia arsenic such type of poisoning takes place in the when the ground water pollution is there they, these pollutants come into that so ground water pollutants are uh, the fertilizer chemicals they go into the water table and affect it then there is the suspended matter no suspended matter some pollutants substances particles and chemicals do not easily dissolve those which do not dissolve but they are suspended in the water so this kind of material is called particulate matter some suspended pollutants later settle under the water body they can harm and even kill aquatic life and live that live at the floor of the water bodies so that again would be another particulate matter which is suspended then chemical uh water pollution now many industries and farmers work with chemicals that end up in the water so these chemicals are used to control weed insects pests and metals and solvents from industry trees can pollute water also so there is another type of chemicals and these are poisonous and uh, they slowly you know will uh, make these uh, land also infertile and uh, they can kill the animals or the plant life or what it affects you see this type of pollution over here is there also next type of pollution or water pollution is oil spillage so this is oil which spills into the sea or into the localized effect so basically it's again the marine life yeah you are right uh, um 
water pollution is a big problem. Well, yeah, yeah, why diseases are there, you are right. Uh, deaths are there due to this, which can be actually attributed to them, the diseases which come because of this. Cholera, most these individuals there, many ground hole boreholes are contaminated with human feces. Yeah, this is just to agree that, yeah, okay. Uh, human feces, yes, but that, that would be low ground uh, level, low level ground water, but deep ground water doesn't get uh, affected, but then most of the time we are using the low ground water, especially for agriculture and uh, even yes, uh, many for the municipalities or the towns are using the ground water. So you're right. So so let us these ground uh, water pollutants, river, lake, sea water, maybe polluted in many ways again. So it is domestic seaway discharged into rivers from areas located on the banks. Then one is domestic sewage, then is industrial waste effluents from urban areas containing high concentration of oils, heavy metals, and detergents. Then other is chemical fertilizers, pesticides, insecticides, herbicides, and plant remains, mainly used in agriculture. Radioactive waste from nuclear reactors, the places where there are nuclear reactors, some countries, nuclear power plants, or those type of places, they also are susceptible. So that we had covered, I think, in our previous on the uh, nuclear disasters, radiation, and then excretory waste of human and animals in water bodies. Yes, this is what you just covered also. That is also excretory waste. Now, what is the effect of water pollution? These a lot of effects are there, could be varied, um, depends on the chemicals that are dumped and location. So near urban areas, they are highly polluted and this uh, uh, because of the garbage dumped by individuals and dangerous chemicals legally or illegally by manufacturing industries, health centers, other uh, institutions, markets, you know, they, yeah. So you have a health impact of these. Consumption of polluted water is a major cause of the ill health. Polluted water causes some of the deadly diseases you mentioned. <coughs> About 80% of stomach <coughs> diseases in India <coughs> are caused by polluted water. I think most of the developing countries, this is a problem. So, now the nutrients, their effect is called eutrophication. Anybody knows what is it? eutrophication? Have you heard of it? Okay. Water supports aquatic life because of the presence of the nutrients. In the aquatic life, fish and all, the nutrients are there. <coughs> so, excess fertilizers from agriculture fields may mix with surface water and get drained into water bodies, which is called surface runoff. <coughs> the Enrichment of water with nutrients such as nitrates, phosphates that trigger the growth of green algae. If this green algae, which is on the surface of the water or in between inside water, that is growth is called eutrophication. <clears throat> the fast growth of algae followed by decomposition that depletes the water body of its dissolved. Uh, see this algae 
growth it then naturally depletes the uh, oxygen in the water and because of this due to lack of oxygen the fish or the uh, marine life gets uh, destroyed so they die off so this is eutrophication the effect of eutrophication also so what you can see is what happens sewage fertilizers they go into the enriched nutrient contents in lakes eutrophication so algae multiplies algae uses up oxygen and begins to die decomposers that is bacteria multiply and they use more oxygen so organisms such as fish die due to lack of oxygen so this is another big problem then there is effect of toxic pollutants heavy metal pesticides and uh, so some metals like magnesium zinc copper presence in traces quantity are important for life but some metals however cause severe toxic effects on human health and the aquatic ecosystem so another thing is biomagnification now that is non biodegradable pesticides such as ddt are used for crop protection so once they enter the food chain their concentration keeps on increasing with each trophic level steps of a food chain food chain you all understand simply speaking there are herbivores carnivores so they they are the food chain so one eats the other and the chain can as a result accumulation of these compounds take place in the body this toxic chemicals and entry and they come through the food chain we are eating the uh, uh, produced crops and all so if they have got these uh, harmful pesticides non biodegradable so they we it gets accumulated inside over a period they become harmful so they go into the crops the we eat the crops so we get it so entry of harmful now non biodegradable chemicals in small concentration and their connection in greater various levels of food chain is called biomagnification so if you see this is the food chain diagram showing and the so now how do you control water pollution very simple recycle and reuse of water you know especially the effluents industrial or the city water which is uh, thrown out into the rivers so treating industrial effluents before discharging into rivers separate channels for river and sewage water yeah avoid contamination of rivers lakes and ponds by washing clothes bathing etc don't allow these type of things because detergents and these also are not throwing waste food material paper biodegradable vegetables and plastic into open drains so some of the then qualified and experienced people must be consulted from time to time for effective control of water pollution public awareness must be initiated law standards and practices should be evolved and that is also important so all these methods could be used so one small example waste water you know there a lot of it is being produced all over in all the places so in say one example in boston harbor 10 years ago it was the most polluted harbors and the first environmental law was passed in boston in 1656 restricting butchers from dumping animal parts and other garbage into the harbor waste i'm just giving an example of this so there they started 1656 the first law came 1660 
harbor was the major import harbor for england and in uh, uh, 17, 19, six, there was a series of illness breaking out and there were cholera epidemic later on. Uh, there were warning signs posted that not to swim in this water or, you know, it would affect the skin. And they built two sewage treatment plants in 1889 and 1899. But they were still pumping the raw sewage into. So, there was a Clean Water Act passed in USA in 1972. There's just an example that this is what happens, what can be done. So you see the Boston Harbor now, it looks quite good. And you can see on map where it is. So how the water treatment is done there, this will give an example of uh, how water treatment is done. So primary treatment is done where large and small debris screened out on one place, one of the islands it is doing there. So waste water is sent to another place where larger particles are allowed to settle out uh, as sludge. And the sludge is sent to digesters. So primary treatment is done where debris is secreted, waste water uh, is allowed to settle the sludge and sludge is then sent to digester. So the pictures you can see is the how it looks there. These are the digesters. So now then the secondary treatment is there. So which is a biological process or a waste uh, water and microorganisms are combined in tanks. Secondary sludge sent to digesters, sludge converted to fertilizer pellets and clarified water mixed with bleach, dechlorinated and discharged into the bay. So this is there. You want to how dangerous is the sea water that we water waste water that we put to the this thing? So you can see it affects all these. Uh, Contamination is bad for the fish and other seas and the municipal sewage, excess nutrient, disease carrying bacteria, virus and toxic chemicals. We spoke about the effect of nutrients also, chemicals, metals, all these. Then municipal sewage has uh, three things we saw. So first is the excess nutrients is caused by various forms of nitrogen and Phosphates uh, found in fertilizers, plant material, uh, detergents, and all necessary for plant growth. In excess, leads to excessive growth of aquatic plant. So we saw that eutrophication. Then, if you see this, this sea turns red into planktons. So that's the effect of this. And again, then this second thing was the bacteria virus enters the uh, water through storm water drains, sanitary sewers overflow, peeling septic tanks, runoff from livestock pens, ports, that dump sewage, etc. That is what you were saying in Malawi. Problem. This is happening most of the places which need and better places they are controlling it. Test for a few indicators, bacterial such as fecal chloroform and E. coli. This is a test then there. Then third thing we spoke was uh, toxic chemical metals. These are most dangerous sewage. They concent it concentrates it many times transformed by natural process to more harmful substances. Okay. So there was a mini motor disease. Uh, this is Minimota uh, uh, from two industrial effluents in Minimota and Nigota in Japan. So this caused a neurological disorder caused by ingestion of large amounts of fish contaminated by methyl mercury. So that caused this Minimota disease. It's a very, so things like that, a lot of impact is there on uh, for this also. So, 
we are generally covered the impact of uh, <coughs> there are a lot of other things also environmental control and other things required so uh, what it's also very important so anything you want to ask on this water pollution yeah okay so so uh, actually i'm just covering uh, this thing if you have any questions you can ask me otherwise we can go to the uh, another very interesting next topic is your uh, yeah deforestation unit 11 so Now, all these are very important things, I think, like air pollution and water pollution, you are all aware, and I think these are there. Uh, but even deforestation, I think, would be another problem, which you all will be aware. So this is the other unit. Uh, so actually, that covers the status of deforestation in India, causes of deforestation, impacts of deforestation, deforestation, and disaster management. So uh, although the course here will be covering naturally about India conditions, but the India is such a big country, so most of it you could relate with your place, because the causes and other things would be similar to for everybody or the effects and the management aspect. So deforestation is the process whereby natural forests are cleared through logging and not burning, either by logging, cutting them, or burning. So either to use the timber or to replace the area for alternative use, like agriculture or other thing. It is a permanent dis destruction of the indigenous forests and woodlands. So it does not include industrial forests. Deforest is you know, clearing Earth's surface on a massive scale. So damaging the quality of the land. And the rainforests about the around the world are diminishing. So this is another thing. So there are many countries where the, likely to lose their tropical forests. Deforestation comes in many forms, including fires, clear cutting for agriculture, ranching and development, unsustainable logging for timber and degradation due to climate change. Deforestation is a particular concern in tropical rainforests because these forests are home to a lot of biodiversity. So, you can see some pictures about how deforestation looks like in many countries, many places. So some of the facts to know about deforestation is forests cover 31% of the land area on our planet. They produce vital oxygen and are home for people and wildlife. So many of the world's most threatened and endangered animals live in forests. So a lot of people, 1.6 billion, rely on benefit uh, of forests are giving them for food, fresh water, clothing, traditional medicine, shelter. And, but these are being threatened by from uh, deforestation, which will reduce their these people's uh, source of income, food, and, and <clears throat> so deforestation is one of the most pressing 
land use problem. A lot of deforestation is taking place all the time. Uh, every second you are losing a lot of forest. So, so you can see this thing that rainforests are these dark ones mostly around the equator. So these are the rainforests, tropical forests also you can say. So largest rainforest worldwide listed in the are Amazon Basin, South America, Congo River Basin, Central, Southeast Asia, New Guinea, Madagascar. Uh, these are the places where you have this thing. So you can see major rainforest it shows. So in your places, Congo River Basin, you can see how much Madagascar and the rainforests are getting this thing. So, what is the value of forest? So, it's simple. See, value of forest is simple to understand but difficult to quantify it. And major contribution on global economy, they support livelihood. Direct use of forests are more easy to quantify. Indirect use or an option value, optionally what can be are seldom quantified or indirect values. There is also no use value of forest. That if you don't use it, still it is valuable. So, there's a lot of deforestation impact is there. The health of forest is deteriorating. So, you can consider forest is a conditional renewable source which can be regenerated but needs a long period of time to maintain its sustainable functioning. So in India, the forest resources have been found to be depleting at a very high pace. So charcoal production, housing, and industrial development, road construction, and agriculture, these are the reasons. Rapid industrialization, urbanization, and overexploitation are another reason for deforestation. So, chorus, again, Forests are cut down for many reasons, but most of them are related to money or to people need to provide for their family. The biggest drive for is, is agriculture. So the farmers, they want to cut the land, forest to have more plant cropping area. So small farmers clear some little uh, land and to use it. So logging is another uh, use of this thing, which creates deforestation. <coughs> so, if you see the percentage wise deforestation is mostly by small agriculture who so want to clear this thing to have more area for planting crops. <coughs> So all you can say it's man-made, but then also it could be unintentional also like a com combination of human and natural factors, wildfire is there, then uh, overgrazing, and this may prevent young uh, growth of young trees. Overgrazing may prevent that also. Now what effect is there of so uh, uh, deforestation? Soil erosion, landslide, land degradation, flooding, uh, siltation, destruction of habitat, destroy vulnerable species, reduce levels of underground water, and affects the water cycle. All these are effects. So it impacts the carbon cycle. So one is the carbon cycle. Now this is a little more, so I am quickly covering it. Then it impacts the water cycle. Um, then uh, it soil ero erosion is another impact of deforestation. 
then uh, extinction of species, then there's a edge effect. So microclimate, small area climate can uh, endanger endemic species, native species or something that is also there. Then uh, extinction of species, then it can reduce the biodiversity, deforestation can, wildlife is deprived of habitat. So that is another impact. Then uh, it can disrupt livelihoods. So people who are directly effect, uh, relying on forest. So deforestation also poses a severe social problem, leading to why uh, uh, it could lead to conflicts also. Habitat fragmentation. That means it disturbs the animals' habitat. They are divided and it can pose problems. So impact of deforestation first is on global climate, impact on hydrology and soil quality, impact of biological diversity and impact on economic and social wealth. Okay. So what are the steps to uh, combat deforestation, legislation, reforestation, fallowing, leaving it fallow without the field. Education to all about it. contour, plowing and terracing to protect against landslides. That could also be and land use policy, laws and other things to be put and properly. So mitigation can be by first by corporation and markets to not to allow use these type of things. Then sustainable consumer options consumer are also aware so they won't use politics uh, to achieve zero deforestation by 2020 and then this is being uh, so you can also use your consumer power and not go for things which will like this so this is what we were covering on uh, deforestation as a unit as a course, I think time is over. So, industrial wastewater pollution, uh, I think we have covered it also to some extent, but the time is over for today. So, I think you can read it also. And tomorrow, again, we have a class. So, we will spend about five, ten minutes if you want to ask any questions on this. So, anything specially anybody wants to ask? Okay. Uh, actually, this uh, you are getting this, this is being recorded. So I hope you are you you can use that. Are you getting the recorded? Uh, uh, this uh, like the, all the classes are recorded, so you can view them later on also, isn't it? So okay. So whatever you have uh, required them, if you are not getting them, then you can write to your coordinator. Okay. So now time is over. So anybody still wants to ask you have one question you have asked, I have mentioned about that. So we can meet tomorrow. Okay then, thank you very much. It will also be. Thank you, sir. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks a lot. So, so we can leave for today and stop the recording. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Okay then. Have a good day. You, Tomorrow we can meet. Uh, bye -bye. Thank you, sir. Bye bye. Bye. bye, -bye. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Bye -bye. Bye -bye. Bye -bye. Bye -bye.